this is again something that was so hard for me to to get but it was so powerful once i got it is that i don't actually need to try In today's episode, I share with you the truth about love that set me free. And I don't want to say too much more about it before you dive into it, but it is such a powerful transmission and something that truly transformed my life, the way I feel as a woman, as a human, as a lover, as a partner, and how I be and how I will be in relationships because of this. This is perhaps one of the most powerful lessons I've ever learned. And I trust it has the capacity to free you too. So let's dive in. The truth about love that set me free. There are many things, many things that I could speak about when it comes to love. But the one thing that really hit me the hardest and transformed my relationship with love and with romantic partnerships the most, or my relationship with myself in relationship to that, is that you like because, and you love despite. You like someone because of their qualities, and you love someone despite their qualities. You like someone because of some of the qualities that you feel really impressed by. And you love someone despite some of the qualities that you do not like or would wish to change. This reframed my idea of romantic love in such a deep way. For so long, I hid parts of myself in relationship and I thought that I had to keep myself contained in order to be in relationship for years i wanted to be the cool girl the easygoing girlfriend at times the good wife i got knows i played into that i played many games trying to avoid abandonment trying to avoid betrayal trying to avoid feeling rejected again and one day i finally got this and it set me free like it really 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 set me free i remember being in a in a coaching call with one of my mentors and I said this and it just landed for me in a whole new way which is that love will stay for as long as it's meant to and it will leave as soon as it's time and there is absolutely nothing I can do to control that. This may make sense to you conceptually but really let this land because this has the capacity to change your life forever. I'll say it again, love will stay around for as long as it's meant to and it will leave as soon as it's time and there is nothing, absolutely nothing we can do to control that. Sounds simple, but it is so big. We, there's nothing we can do to control that because love can't be won. People fall in love despite not because. So I can never be cause, meaning I can never be the cause of someone loving me. And neither can you. We get to really let this land. You can't force or manipulate someone into loving you. You can't do that either by doing all you can to be the easiest or the most together put together or the prettiest or the most understanding or the most helpful or the one with least needs or the coolest or the most seductive or the hardest to get whatever it is whatever strategy you've learned or told yourself that work the most nurturing the most detached none of it you can only truly ever be fully yourself and await for love to find you when and if it's meant to. 
And that is the only way in which we can be in true authentic partnership. And for those of us that want to be in the conversation of sacred union, this is what it takes. It takes you allowing all of you to be on the table, to be shared, to be seen. You, the messy, weird, untamed version of you. It takes that for you to be able to find that person that is actually going to be a match to whatever that version of yourself is. When we are hiding, when we are suppressing parts of ourselves, when we are constantly curating and rehearsing our expression, we can't possibly attract a relationship that is actually a match. And even when we try our hardest, this is again something that was so hard for me to, to get, but it was so powerful once I got it, is that I don't actually need to try to be whatever I tell myself will be perfect, lovable enough, beautiful enough, likable enough. That's actually that, <laughs> even if I do a really great job at being really likable and really lovable and really easy and really pretty and really whatever that I put all of my efforts into being, even if I do that, even then, love will leave as soon as it's meant to. So instead of working so hard to being liked because my work has been surrendering, fully dropping deep into myself, into full acceptance of who I be, into full trust of life, relinquishing my desire to control things. And getting to a space where I love myself enough, I accept myself enough, and I feel safe within my body enough to know that I will be okay no matter what. And from that place, I was able to stop controlling, to stop trying to predict what's going to happen in relationship, trying to ensure that the other person thinks about me what I think they need to think about me, that the other person perceives me a certain way or realizes certain things about me so that I can feel safer, so that I can feel that they will love me for longer, that they will stay, that they will not abandon me. I was able to really drop into a space of exhale where there's surrender and whatever is meant to happen will happen. And this was one of the most ego annihilating, soul freeing truths I've ever let in my body, felt in my body. Because again, it allowed me to stop working so hard to do everything I thought I had to do and appear in all of the ways I thought I had to appear to be loved. And instead, it humbled me to this sacred reminder that love is orchestrated by something bigger than me, that I cannot manipulate people into loving me. I can try to manipulate people into liking me, but I can't actually spark love. Love is a force none of us knows how it works, why it starts, why it ends. And I'm talking about partnership, like romantic love right now. But that spark that makes us feel in love with someone, there's no way to predict that. There's no way to control that. There's no way to manipulate that. So no matter how hard we try and how much effort we put into it, there is no escaping divine destiny. There is no escaping love's schedule. So when I got that, it's just like, it broke my world. It's like, oh my God. Here I was playing good wife. Here I was doing so much for my partner, putting so much of what I desired, what I wanted, what I thought aside so that I could be easy enough, so that I could give him enough that I would have credit, so that he would have to love me back 
because my credit, my bank is full. I've been giving you so much. I've been doing so much for you. So now you owe me. I didn't know that's what I was doing, but I was doing that. And when I finally got this, that, oh, there's nothing I can actually do. Like, there's nothing. I could be the most perfect person in the planet, which obviously we all know doesn't exist, but I could work so hard to be everything I thought would make me lovable. And even then, if I am not meant to be with this person, it will have to end because God has other plans. So I will have to surrender to life's plans and I will not be able to control the situation. And that was, as I said, the most ego annihilating and soul freeing thing I've ever learned. Love will stay for as long as it's meant to and it will leave as soon as it's time. And there is absolutely nothing we can do to control that. There's nothing we can do to predict that. There's nothing we can do to stop that. All we can do is to work on loving ourselves, accepting ourselves, being there for ourselves, feeling safe in and with ourselves, so that when that happens, if it happens, if it happens that the spark ends and we're on the receiving end of it, we don't make that mean X, Y, Z about ourselves, so that we don't make up stories about who we are or our worth or our value based on love schedule, based on love's timetable. So what I was able to really experience for myself through this was such a greater sense of spaciousness and so much more authenticity coming through, so much more congruence and embodiment being expressed through me because I could just be who I am. I could just be how I am. I could just be authentic in the here and now, authentic to myself in the moment versus always looking at myself and observing everything I was going to do, everything I was going to say, everything that I was experiencing, everything that I was feeling, telling myself, you cannot feel this, you should be feeling this instead, you cannot express this, you should appear this way instead. I could let go of all of that, all of those plans that I was having or making in order to feel as though then I was going to be safe, I was going to be loved. So this is so important to really understand when we want to be in powerful, authentic partnership with another. Because otherwise we'll spend years and years, decades at times, lifetimes at times, trying to protect our wounded little girls inside, our wounded little boys, and our partners will only get that from us. They will only get the diluted, worried, controlling version of ourselves. And if we want to bring more of us, if we want to experience what some people call sacred union, what some people call true love, what some people call powerful partnership, we need to experience that within ourselves first. Come in sacred union with ourselves, in sacred union with the divine and the divine timing and love's schedule. Come in divine union with our truth. Come in divine union with our needs. Really honoring ourselves, who we are and us we are, where we're at, and trusting that love will find its way to us in the perfect moment with the perfect person for us or for that season of our lives. And there is a humbling effect to really letting this truth land and knowing that you can't control any of it. But there is a, such a freeing nature to it as well. It's so liberating. Because then all the efforts and all of the time and energy that you spend trying to control 
once you realize you can't actually control any of it, you gain all of that energy back. You gain all of that power, all of that time back, which is phenomenal. Especially if you have big lives, if you have big things that you want to do, if you have people that you want to be with and enjoy spending time with, all of that energy comes back right at you. And you can use it in powerful, inspiring, fun, nourishing ways. I realized there was so much energy that I put out there trying to make sure that I was going to be loved and that I would appear easy enough and perfect enough and helpful enough and giving enough and sexy enough and all of the things. It was so exhausting. And when I moved past this, I've been able to experience some of the biggest challenges I ever thought I would go through and also in relationship. Some of the biggest storms in relationship and feel at peace. I feel genuinely okay because I trust that love will stay for as long as it's meant to and it will leave as soon as it's time and I cannot control any of it. So knowing that freed me. It freed me from so much. And it really has the ability to do the same for you. If you allow this to really land on a somatic level, to really enter you and move you, not just cognitively, not just, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that relationships can end. I know that marriage is not necessarily forever, but do you actually know that in your body? Have you surrendered to that? Okay, you may know this. You may think of this as true. You may have accepted that as a true fact in your mind. But have you surrendered to this? Have you allowed this to humble you? Have you allowed it in fully in your body? If you haven't, then you may still find yourself trying to control relationship. You may still find yourself trying to make sure that the other person sees you, perceives you in a certain way. You may still find yourself contouring and, and making yourself small or, or trying to make yourself bigger or whatever, just not being fully authentic. Once you do allow this in, once you fully accept this and just know this and just think, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense actually accept it like just the same way that I've accepted I identify as a female the same way that I've accepted I have really long hair just the same way that I've accepted I was born in Barcelona just the same way that I've accepted that fill in the blank I've accepted this I've accepted that I cannot control love I've accepted that I cannot control love schedule. I've accepted that there is nothing I can do to convince someone to stay, to manipulate someone into loving me for any longer, not one minute longer than it's meant to. I cannot do anything to make someone stay in love. Yes, you might be able to convince someone to stay in a relationship, but I'm talking about being in love romantic love when we feel in love there's nothing absolutely nothing i can do to control that and accepting that set me absolutely free i keep saying it so it lands so the invitation is that for you to really consider whether you've accepted this or are still in denial or resistance or fight with this and do whatever it takes if you really want to be free in relationships if you really want to be free in yourself in love and do whatever it takes to take this on if it feels authentic and true to you of course you don't have to take it on if it doesn't but if it does if you can see how this might create space and freedom for you as well. Then fully let it in. 
to whatever it is that you get to do to allow yourself to let this in your body to let this inform your system and this is why the embodiment work i keep saying over and over again it's so powerful because we allow these truths to be not just concepts in our minds but truths in our bodies we take the stories that we've had written in our bodies in the past through all of our traumas all of our hurts all of our pains all of our fears all of our stories all of our past experiences we take those stories and rewrite them until we feel safe to take on a new story to do things a new way for example I experienced so many things in my childhood that led me to believing I could not trust men. I felt unsafe. I felt that I was either going to be abandoned, betrayed, or harmed by men. So I had to rewrite this story in my body. I could have told myself this and in my mind go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. But it wasn't until I created the space and was able to rewrite this story in my body, that I was able to feel safe, to really accept this truth and let it free me. So again, if this resonates, if this lands in any way for you, let this be more than just a concept in your mind. Let this be something that opens you, that raptures you, that humbles you, that informs your system that something else is possible, that you are safe now, that you can step into a new version of your expression as a woman, as a leader, as a lover. Let this really, really set you free. Because love is beautiful. Relationships are beautiful. Romantic partnerships, sharing your life with someone, it is so beautiful. But there is nothing more beautiful and nothing more healing than fully getting to that place within yourself. And there is no such thing as sacred union, true, powerful, loving, romantic partnership without that taking place within first. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that it landed for you in a valuable way. If you want more of this content, be sure to subscribe so you get notified when new episodes are released. And since you're already here, if you want to leave us a rating and a review, that would be so deeply appreciated. You can also find me on Instagram at Sigritasius for more free transformational and inspirational content. And if you want to receive updates on all of the different things offers, events, free resources that we have for you, then come and join my inner circle. Go to secretasiascom slash inner circle and subscribe over there. I will leave all of the links in the show notes for you and I will connect with you on the next episode. Lots of love. <laughs>